Right now, I'm gonna show you the report templates for anyone who's gonna be performing or watching duct tightness testing or enclosure testing. We're gonna start with the enclosure testing. Um, these two reports are downloadable from our website, which is buildingperformanceworkshop.com. Uh, that's backslash coaching, or excuse me, forward slash. Uh, and the, the, this is a little bit more complicated than you may be familiar with. Don't ever let anybody give you um, a report that is written on a napkin that just says, this is what your CFM 50 is from the blow order test. Here's the first thing you want to start with. Start with your test date. Today is December uh, 12th, 2019. The address here is where I'm going to you know, put in, I'm just telling you how to do this basically. Uh, obviously the address is important and if there are multiple units, make sure that the unit number is in there. Wind conditions, this is very important for how um, much error there might be in your test. You want to ideally do the test when it is still out and you would just put a simple little X there or check mark. If you do a test during a gusty or a very blustery day, and I have done tests where the baseline is like 37 pascals. Um, that's not ideal. If you have already traveled 10 hours to get there, you're not going to come back tomorrow. So you sometimes you have to make do, but um, in this case, you just want to know what it was that was going on outside when you did this test. The temperature outside, so we're going to go ahead and say that it was still. The temperature outside today is something like 50. We're in Atlanta. Uh, baseline pressure. If you don't know how to run the baseline function, on your manometer that you're using for the blower door test, you need to stop watching right now um, and go learn how to do that because this is very important. So let's say that the baseline pressure was five pascals. That means that when we run it to 50 pascals, which we're gonna do right down here, we're actually gonna be running it to negative 45 pascals, not negative 50. But again, if you don't know how to do that function, then, um, then you need to go investigate that further. The calibration ring, uh, let's just say that you went open, um, and that's the configuration of the blower door fan itself, how many rings are in place. You've generally got op wide open fan, you've got A, you've got B, you might have C, you might have uh, you know B4 if you're using a 5000 model from Retrotech. The time average, generally, uh, my right hand man, John Bergman, used to say 10 seconds are nothing, baby. Uh, 10 seconds is a good, even number to go with. And that basically means that it's the blower door system is going to be averaging the reading over the last 10 seconds into one number. Every every second it's doing that, taking the last 10 seconds, taking the last 10 seconds. That's a good thing to do. You want to at least use five seconds. Don't ever do a one second test. That's just very jumpy, as you may know. The blower door reading, let's just say for the sake of argument that it is 3000 CFM 50. And you can feel free to, if you're European, you could put 3.000, that means the same thing. Um, this should be obvious. This is the number that everyone's going to get in any blower door. It's the number of air units, CFM stands for cubic feet per minute, right, that are flowing through this under uh, the timed um, system that you're, that you're using, CFM or liters per second. This is kind of a special thing. This is 0.6 quality control reading. What that means is we want to take your 50 pascals and cut it in half. So instead of going 50 pascals, I want you to reset your manometer and uh, run the fan to 25 pascals. And if you're using uh, what's called cruise control in energy conservatory or Minneapolis equipment or the at function, um, which just, you know, you set it to a pressure, then this will calculate it for you automatically. You want to make sure that you're not in at 50 mode while you're trying to drive to 25 pascals because that would be weird. But what you want this number to be is roughly 0.6 of that 3,000. You do not want to make that up. You don't want to, you know, if I was to, to be hack about this, I've got my calculator out. 3,000 times 0.6 is 1,800. If I see a report that looks like this, that shows that this person did not know what they were doing. That is not good. Um, what you want is to actually read what actually is going on on the blower door. So it should be roughly two thirds of what that number is. Um, and this again is way too round of a number. If I literally got that number for a 10 second average and I got it for 30 seconds straight, what I would do is just go like this, bam. 
just to make sure that the person who was checking my work later knew that I was really being accurate. I'm not rounding to the thousands. You don't want anybody to think that you're doing that. Um, you don't have to do this. That's totally uh, above and beyond. You do not have to do that. But you want this number and this number to be related roughly in a at 50 and then two thirds of this number. Uh, this is really useful because when somebody is setting this up, if you wire your blower door wrong, you set up the hoses incorrectly, this number will be totally out of whack. And you will know that you just set your test up wrong. So it's a little way to self-check. Condition floor area, obviously very important. Let's call this um, you know, 4,000 square feet. The conditioned volume, generally, uh, you know, first of all, you want to know exactly what this is, so don't just do what I'm about to do. But if I'm checking somebody's work and I'm looking at this report that somebody in Washington sent me in Atlanta to just double check them and give me a second opinion, I would be looking for the conditioned floor area times roughly 9 or 10 feet. So that would be something in the neighborhood of 40,000. Right. I hope that that makes sense. That's basically that the floor area, the square footage, uh, times the ceiling height, and that would be nine feet. If you want to be really slick about it and count in the uh, floor cavities that are in between floors, which mm, truly is probably part of the condition volume, then you could do this. There's there are ResNet certified ways to do this. There's the BPI certified way to do this. Um, there's just, you want to be able to defend what this number came from and how you got this. Air changes per hour, you can get this out of your gauge if you have programmed it with the conditioned volume. But what you do is take this number, 3001, times 60, which is, um, you know, gets you out of minutes and into hour. And then you divide by the volume, 40,000, and you get an air change per hour of 4.5. Generally, you want to be rounding to the um, first decimal place. That's a good idea just to do, because then you've, you've got that. Now, if you're handing this to, if you're underneath your limit, uh, let's say the limit is five air changes per hour where you are. If the legal limit is five, and let's just make this up. I'm, I'm going out of my, my whack here. This doesn't make sense mathematically anymore, but let's just say it's 5.1. You wanna make it easy for your client, who is the builder of this home, to pass code. Code says in your state, I'm just gonna assume this, it says five. It does not say 5.0. So if your home comes in at 5.1 or even 5.49, all of that rounds down to five as a whole number. They are looking for whole numbers. So just make it easy on the code guy who's supposed to be enforcing this and put five, just one round number in there. You can try to make this really, really simple by bolding that or coloring it red or something like that. You are free to edit this report uh, template however you like. Um, but if you put the decimals in there, then you might have somebody get a hard time later. Okay. Uh, and by, by the way, likewise, that rounds up to five if it's 4.5, right? That's why when it, if you're less, if you're beating code, you go ahead and put in the decimal place so that they know. Put in what manometer model and brand you're using and what blower door fan you're using. And then you want to just simply tell them whether it succeeds or fails at what you were doing. Again, this, remember, was 4.5. So yes, we succeed at uh, achieving the standard. And I'm going to put in here 2015 Georgia Energy Conservation Code. Your state is going to have its own conservation code um, for the energy code because they do amendments. So just make sure you know what that is. Then any notes here, and you might want to put things like, um, you know, leakage per uh, square foot of enclosure area, if you want to be super cool. You could put in zonal pressure test results. If you want to test the garage, the attached garage, the attached attic, or the crawl space, or something, something like that, just to really like drive home the point that this is a baseline test. You want to always try and do nested tests, and that's just a little tip for people who are doing this. Then your name, obviously the technician who's running this, your signature, and your qualifications. And you might have your HERS Raider certification, your BPI certification, your DT, DET verifier, which is a one-day certification course. 
Um, and then, you know, if, if you're me, then you say, oh, I wrote the book on how to do this test. Uh -huh. um, which I did not invent this test, but for sure, um, having written a book helps me to defend my numbers. Uh, by the way, as far as that goes, let me just say this real quick. Enclosure tightness test. One other thing that I would definitely put in here is uh, leakage in pressurization mode. Because the one point test that you're putting on this sheet for code compliance is the reading in depressurization mode generally. Uh, that's how most people are going to do it because it's lower. That's why. Uh, if you do the pressurization mode and then you average the two readings, and also if you're running multi point testing, all that stuff, that's just a higher level of sophistication. That way, if somebody asks you, well, did you run pressurization or depressurization? You could say, well, I ran both. Which would you like? Duct system tightness test is the other report template that you are able to download from the same page at our website. Again, date, construction, stage, really important. Rough in, that's the time to do this, period. If you're coming in at final, you want to show that on your report for sure. The location, let's just say it's um, bonus room addition. Air handler installed, uh, yes or no. If it's yes, then you have a different leakage level that you're able to hit. Um, so if we say no, then uh, code essentially assumes that 25% of the air leakage that you're going to get is going to come from the cabinet itself of the equipment. So let's say that you're in Illinois um, and you're, you're at 4 CFM per 100 square feet is your limit. If you do it with the blower door, or excuse me, with the equipment, the furnace, the air handler in place, and that the system is complete, then you're allowed four CFM per 100 square feet. If you do it without that piece of equipment being there and you just have ducts that are kind of connecting to nothing, there's this gap in the middle where the, the furnace is going to be, then you would be allowed three CFM per 100 square feet. So duct calibration ring, right here you've got the same thing. You've got wide open, you have uh, ring A, ring B, etc. So let's just say that you, you're using ring A. Uh, pressure tap location. And by the way, you want to know what all this stuff is before you pull the trigger. So pressure tap location is, um, you could you could say in the uh, return plenum. Um, what's beautiful about code testing is that uh, if you are going to test really tight, then it doesn't matter where you put the, the pressure tap into the duct system. Um, so in order to figure out what I want to get here, and this is goes for the enclosure tightness test too, before you press go on your blower door, you want to know what number you are looking for. And if you don't know why, do it a couple times without knowing that and have your client standing there over your shoulder and then have them ask you, well, what does that mean? And <laughs> you get stressed out enough that you're like, okay, well, I'm going to figure that out. So condition floor area serve, let's just say it's a thousand square feet in this addition. Um, so, so we're gonna, instead of calling this bonus room, we're just going to call this whole the whole addition. So if I've got a thousand square feet served, I'm allowed with no air handler installed three CFM per hundred square feet. So there's 10 hundreds here. So I take 10 times three and I would be allowed 30 CFM. That's the magic number that I'm looking for. I hope that it's that number. Let's say that I do the test and it comes in at 31. What I am probably going to do uh, is tell the tech who's right there, the person who installed the system, that they need to go and start taping stuff up uh, right now. So if they can get that down to 30, then we're good. If you get it down to 30.4, excuse me, 30.4, you're good because you round down. Um, if you're at 29, obviously that's great. So if you're at somewhere just north of this, then you want to have them air sealed right then and there. If you come in at 90, you are not going to be air sealing that in the next 30 minutes. It needs to be a third of the leakage that's there. And in fact, in general, if you haven't done this test for code for an HVAC contractor before, and it's their first test with you, tell them that they are probably going to fail. Just warn them right out of the gate, because that is true of almost every company that I've ever tested for. Uh, when they are prepped for that, then when they fail, you're there to help them. You're the hero. And yes, they will be paying for another test on another day when you come back. Um, but you want that to, to be right. So we've got 30.6 quality control reading. Same as from the other report. You want this to be something like two-thirds of this number. 
And, and again, you do not make that up or calculate that. You actually test it. You run the CFM at 12 and a half pascals, which is half of 25, and the flow should cut by a third. The condition flow area serves. The CFM leakage per hundred square feet is three, and we succeed. Yay. Any notes that you've got here? The test equipment you used, the technician, name, signature, qualifications again, and then the HVAC installer that you were working with. All that stuff makes it pretty simple, but this is a comprehensive report, and so it looks like you are very professional. Looking professional is half of the game, at least. So making sure that you're not just being professional, that you also tuck in your shirt, smile, look professional. All that stuff is, is important. Uh, if you want more reporting software, I've got Apt Reports, which is a very kind of a full suite, modular, customizable uh, report for homeowners, not just for something that looks like a highly technical report like this. Um, and I hope that you also check out my training portal, and I've got lots of other resources on the YouTube channel, on the television show, Home Diagnosis. All those links are available at buildingperformanceworkshop.com. Thanks very much for tuning in.